You know when it's over, you can't lose. I got secrets, can't leave, can't cool. So take it off like you're home alone. You know, dancing for the man while you're on the phone. Checking your reflection and telling your best friend, like, girl, I think my butt can be gone. Hey, it's a war outside, it's a war outside. It's a war outside. And everybody acting like they don't see it. Remember that nigga Q commented and said, hey, if we need a crowdfund to get y'all some more comfortable <laughs> church chairs. The stools, the, <laughs> the wasn't stools chairs, nigga, like was stools. Yeah. Is my audio going to be okay with this? Yeah, you just got to make sure you're talking to the mic. You'll be fine. As long as you're talking into the mic. <clears throat> like this. Keep going. Yo, 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 mic check one, two, one, two. Yeah, that's fine. That's solid? Yeah. Just like make sure it's like... You know, like that shit. Remember they was telling us to do this shit? Oh, uh, one fist, one fist yeah. away? Yeah. I <laughs> think I'm good. Niggas learning new shit, you know? Incorporating it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's growth, right? You know? Yeah. I mean, I learned a lot about, like, sound, engineering, and design over the last six or seven months. So, some cool little tricks. You can yeah. see why white people dominate this industry, because you where would I have learned that at? You know, they be having like all the little tricks and tools yeah. that you can't get access to. But yeah, you damn near need to move the mic though. It's Where? Closer? Yeah. Or like you're going like that. Going like, nigga, what do you mean I'm going like what? <laughs> like you'll, you'll talk, you'll start talking and then you'll move away. Turn from my head. Mic. You'll turn away from the mic. That's <sighs> this shit. Uh, yeah, I'm over this. This might be the first and last one. But then is it in my face? I guess not. I don't know. Is this cool right here? Keep talking. Yo, 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 yeah, yo, yo. All right. I'll just try my best to stay this way. For sure. Instead of fist away. All right. You might want to just monitor my shit. But All right. If I go like this. That means what? <laughs> Adjust the mic. You're talking to the mic. All right. But right now I'm doing cool. Yeah. Hella Black episode 91. 91 episodes. We here exactly. Didn't have to search for it. Came prepared. I knew we was doing ninety one. That that's twenty twenty one growth for y'all, man. But shout out to all the patrons, all the patrons. Patreon dot com slash Hell Black Pod. Yes, sir. Appreciate y'all supporting and rocking with us. You know, throughout throughout everything, throughout sometimes you know when we can get hella busy and a little bit less consistent. You know, I know we started this YouTube shit up. Did a, a lot of solid ones in there, you know. <laughs> niggas got busy and, yeah. and they're doubling back, but now we we got a setup. You feel me? To where we gonna be on the YouTube episodes, and really got a good calendar coming up for y'all of a lot of dope content. So, Patreon dot com slash Hell Black Pod. Rock with us. Support if you white. Stop listening to this shit for free. I know some of you white people be doing that shit. <laughs> I dead ass know y'all be sneaking it And then at the crib posting Black Lives Matter On their yeah, Facebook or for sure. Black Black Lives Matter signs in their windows But yeah. y- y'all stealing content Black Y'all stealing our content nigga. I don't care if we post it for free you It ain't it. for you for free It ain't for you for free nigga. <laughs> Patreon.com Pay up. Slash Hello Black Pod We will find you if you <laughs> Hey I am excited about this year though bro Like 2021 yeah, I'm yeah. just in reference to to the pod, like like you said earlier, this is something that we've been wanting to do is get back on the video shit. We've been wanting to get more strict and I, I guess strict is like on a more consistent schedule, which is going to require a certain amount of discipline and a strict approach to it. But I, I think I was having this conversation. I think we're having the conversation yesterday with 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 the core team for people's programs, right? Of how people have this, this view of how organizers should live, um, that we, every waking moment we should be just doing movement work, movement work, movement work. And as much as this platform is a space for political education, it's also a creative outlet for me um, yeah. in a way of self-expression. And so to have this, this space is very important to me. And I, I think 
in terms of like self care or whatever or prioritizing self to some degree, like this podcast falls under that uh that realm for me of like this is uh an opportunity for human. me to prioritize yeah. prioritize like self care and, and putting myself first in some degree. Yeah. Nah, you spot on with that. <laughs> yeah, because niggas are like because this podcast, like you, if you really listen to this podcast from the beginning, from episode one to episode eighty nine, you can see our growth. But you can see kind of like how this has been, uh, it's been healing for both of us and hard you know? to maintain, which is like which fucking sucks, you know. And I think prioritizing our our consistency will allow us to immerse ourselves in that kind of healing and creative outlet. And I even think about who was it? Was it uh, Nkrumah who was in the band? I'm not sure. I feel like it was Nkrumah was in a band with like one of the niggas who fucking set him up or some shit like that too. For real, yeah. And so, but like my point is, is that like you gotta have outlets, like radical, yeah. like you feel me. And like, niggas have always had outlets. The Panthers had a band, yeah. Like Malcolm, Malcolm was always in photography had, and shit. A nigga always you know? had a camera around his neck, like. But people always have these like one. These very, you know, niggas want to talk about monolithics, all that shit. They reduce shit. niggas, Nigga, bro. they reduce activists and organizers to these monoliths. Like, you're supposed to only do this one thing yep. for your whole life. And if you, if you and do if you anything outside, outside of the box, it, then you're not who you say you are. Yeah. When and it's that's real, why I'm like, like, fuck that. Niggas is just regular people, you feel me? Like, when you think about and regular it, people are fucking multidimensional, but people put activists on this fucking, organizers on this weird pedestal. Like, niggas ain't just regular people, you feel me, nigga? Like... Like in a post, niggas you know what I mean. Yeah, like, in a post-colonial world, nigga, we're still going to be making music. We're still going to be playing sports. We're yeah. still going to be make we're, newspapers and shit are still going to exist. It's just we will now be we will oh, have we have a collective ownership over exactly. these things. Exactly, but we that's won't be yeah. exploited anymore. But like, nigga, when yeah. when the revol- if we bear arms and all get freedom all, I hope that I can still record a podcast on a Thursday. And that's that's <laughs> one thing I do. Like, I've been doing like I feel like a lot of reflection and shit, um, and just really trying to reflect on like. What is like my my values? What do I want to be doing? And making sure I'm always in alignment with myself. And I was really reflecting. I'm like, damn, in a post revolution, you know what I mean? Like in a revolutionary society, after all this shit is gone, I'm like, damn, I would actually be doing the same. I would want to do the same thing I'm doing right now. That's the goal. Is yeah. st- telling stories through podcasting, uh, teaching people, history, like all those things, yeah. music. Exactly. All these things I would want to st- be doing. I'm like, damn, all right. I'm living in my alignment. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for any of the folks that's doing movement work, whatever work you're doing, shit, even if you're not quote unquote contrib- contributing to the movement in the ways that people have uh, limited movement work too. But like, bro, if you, whatever you do, I, I think it's important that you find some type of creative outlet, some type of healing space, like whatever that just like allows you to get what you need to, to feel alive. Um, I recommend that for all people in the podcast is, as much as it has been a place for political education and community building, it's also been an outlet that I, I really value and I appreciate the people who support our Patreon that, you know, gives us the space, that gives us the 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 financial support to make this a priority in our lives. That shit. And that's why I try to pay it forward. That's why a lot of Especially them, because yeah. of capitalism. It's yeah. like, bro, you forced to work nine to five, do all these things. You know what I'm saying? And you can't do the things you focus on, but Patreon allows us, you feel me, to pay our bills, bro, and to support and focus on the shit that we want to do. You know, so yeah. that, that shit is hella big. So if you ain't a patron, tap in. If you are a patron, appreciate the support, especially in a time where, you know, we we on the verge of another depression, Great Depression, you know, where there's a lot of economic uncertainty because of these capitalist motherfucking pigs. So while while, you know, Elon Musk becomes the richest, excuse richest me, man in the world. Or richest man in the world. Why Jeff Bezos continues to make millions, and all the the non-white billionaires who I do not know that continue to exploit. Bro, these motherfuckers. Poor folks. Fuck more, all y'all. <laughs> and more wealthy under this pandemic. Yeah. Like that's why that nigga uh, Fred Hampton Jr. He be he be calling that shit a pandemic. Like yeah, it's a pandemic, but all the a lot of this shit is planned out. Yeah. To a T, because these niggas is getting rich, and it's not, not rich. I mean, they already rich. Yeah. They're, they're they're getting more and more and more. It's not wealth. about luck. It's you not. Know, if it's one thing me, we learned about capitalism, like you it's can, a well oiled machine. You can predict what's gonna happen next. <laughs> Period. Yeah. So all these motherfuckers are getting more and more wealth. It's a it's a huge money grab going on, you know. 
So it's like, yeah, we have this vaccine that was supposed to be what Operation Warp Speed, and they're letting literally, literally, they're letting vaccines expire. That is supposed to help stop this pandemic. They're doing that shit on purpose. They're doing that shit on purpose, without a doubt. Like you, like I said, bro, like this shit is so predictable. It's so fucking predictable. So anything we seeing right now is planned Plan. from these niggas. <laughs> but New Year. 2021 well we got to you know before we dive into the new year for us I uh both from like the content creation side and all the work and shit we definitely wanted to use this today's episode as an opportunity to kind of reflect on the year that hella black had um even as we like I, th- I think about revamping uh the the youtube shit like that happened in the middle of a fucking in the middle of the uprisings and like the pandemic and shit right in the middle um, of when we was organizing and yeah so yeah. like so much of the stuff has just been kind of re- not repetitive but what's the fuck i've been having trouble finding my words all day today and now i'm just drawing a blank but niggas it's just three o'clock and i've <laughs> already had like fucking six meetings but <laughs> things become so routine you know yeah. that it's kind of hard to look back and like you just all oh, we're gonna do this episode we're gonna get this guest we're gonna send out the zoom link you gonna edit? We gonna upload it to Patreon? That like it, things just become repetitive as fucking. I, the downside of things being repetitive is it's, each moment starts to lose its uniqueness if you let it. And so that's why I'm, I was so excited to do this because like even as I was reviewing the questions, like the outline and shit, I'm like, oh, this chance, this has a, a chance for me to like really look back and think about what we've done this year. Yeah, which is why Cause sometimes you, know, you can forget all the shit you did, bro. And you damn near erase your work in the name of doing more work. <laughs> yeah. Or at least, you know, not giving yourself, like, the credit type shit. You know, or at least looking at, like, damn, man, niggas accomplished this this year. And that's what we're going to accomplish this next year. You feel me? That's how we're going to keep moving. Yep. But, yeah, well, it's a lot of a lot of dope shit that's coming out. Um, yeah. Definitely excited for, for 2021. But looking back at... Looking back at this year, what is your top three episodes? Top three episodes. First one, definitely message to the people. That was one that it was just very raw, organic. I don't even know if we had an outline for it, um, but this was at the height of the rebellion going on after the the murders of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd. I don't know. We just decided to record and really just gave out hella tactics. Um, so message to the people was for sure my, I would say my top one just cause of like, I fucked with it just on the pure tactical level. Like, you know, giving niggas game about protests, giving niggas game about how the police work at protests, how they try to kettle you and shit. Um, and that was also an episode that did really well too, in terms of numbers, even though that's, you know, not how I'm judging <laughs> what yeah. my favorite episode is. That was a solid one though. I enjoyed that one. Yeah. We were just talking our shit and I don't even think it was that long, but it was like, 35, 40 minutes maybe, and niggas just went in. That was my top one. What was your top one? I mean, you should just do all do three, and I'm going to do my three. <laughs> yeah. Right. Then uh, The Myth of Black Buying Power with uh, Dr. Jared Ball. I like that episode because it's just always like, it's like an evergreen shit. <laughs> it's always going to be relevant because these black capitalists is always going to try and co-opt a movement. Um so that episode, you know, I think that that's an important episode uh, to tap back in. So he wrote a book around around uh, the myth of black buying power. And basically, you know, it just talks about after, damn near after every time there's a murder, all these, you know, black capitalists is like, oh, we need black to bank black. Oh, we need to buy black. Like, bro, that ain't going to stop white supremacy. That ain't going to stop settler colonialism. It ain't going to stop the violence that we face all the time. You know, niggas want to talk about, oh, these new ownership groups for Reebok. That ain't finna do shit for the material <laughs> needs of our people, bro. It's finna do good for a select few, for and it's finna sec- look good. Bro, it's like, it ain't, <laughs> you can't recycle the black dollar. The black dollar don't fucking exist, nigga. <laughs> the black, it's just, this, yeah. So, tapping with that episode, talks about, you know, just how people try to use black capitalism as a way to co-op movements. That's episode 62. Yeah. And then uh, the other one was Revolutionary Violence and Pan-Africanism with my nigga Q. Um, and that was just a, a good conversation with a lot of game. It was actually damn near hell. Like, it was dope looking back, like, on all these episodes. 
I'm like, damn, we we recorded a lot of shit. Like, niggas kind of like almost gaslight ourselves in the sense. I'm like, damn, like we didn't even do that many episodes. I'm like, bro, we did hella shit. Like when I be looking at Patreon and be like, damn, like, we got to get some shit out like this. I'm like, well, shit, if they, this shit as a as it stands exists as a syllabus. Like if you chose to go back, you know what I'm saying? Like even one listen isn't an, isn't enough. You can listen to an episode one time and it not be enough. You listen to it two times and it not be enough. Like if you really sit up there and listen to the shit that be happening for on most of the episodes, I ain't going to say all of our shit is just fire. Right? You know, but I'm saying like- we d- I think yeah I fall under that category of fucking like not really looking at the impact of the work and all that it entails yeah for sure yeah because even for myself like you know I was giving a talk on abolition and uh, I I went back and listened to the Maryam Cobb episode I'm like and that helped like give me an- another refresher I'm like damn yeah. we always need refreshers <laughs> yeah you feel me it's like you could study this shit study this shit study should be always got to go back and restudy it that's how you know I think that's the element from like the I don't know if it's the co-opting of political education, but like people think that like you're supposed to read these books one time and then, and then, you then like just, you get it, yeah. or you're supposed to hear this theory one or one or two times and then you get it. And I think that the concept of learning has just been so fucked up. You know, it's it, capitalism. It's so fucked up. I mean, that that's like very a capitalist learning system. Oh, you go to first grade, okay, you know with first grade. You go to second yeah. grade, okay, you know with second grade. And like, that's how <laughs> people have a, have approached radical political education. And I like, bro, like, that's nigga, we right need there. to do a better job of reposting our episodes. Like, hey, tap in with this as opposed. And that's I think that's media does that too, right? Like both of us having type of journalistic and music backgrounds. You know, it's like always on to the next thing. And it's like, no, my nigga, did y'all listen to what we were talking about? Period. Like to fully understand and to retain this. In a way that would allow in a shift in consciousness and a shift in practices, you have to you have to read this shit over and over and over again. Like we yeah, even the books that I, that I, when I'm trying to develop my shit, it's like yeah, I'm reading a book from this person, this but like they're all saying the same things in different ways, and you got to be able to drive that shit home. A thousand percent, and you always got to go back. It's like you know. I view books and YouTube speeches and old, you know, archives. Like that's like a revolutionary Bible to me type mm-hmm. shit. Like I'll go back. Like I'm about to give a speaking engagement. I'm finna go listen to Kwame Torrey for an hour. I'm gonna listen to the same lecture three times just to make sure that shit is falling through me when I go speak. You know what I mean? So I, I think that shit is is super important is to to be always be revisiting this shit because you you know you you can't forget it. Yeah. It's like writing, you feel me? Y'all, we all learn cursive, <laughs> but when's the last time you used cursive? It might take you a little bit longer to to remember how to write in cursive and shit like that. Or it's like a language. If you don't use a language, you are gonna lose it. Facts, you know. Facts. Same with this radical shit. If you ain't always immersed in it. But uh, yeah, what was your top episodes? Uh, I think for I will put the one the most recent ones that we did as like I'll I'll lump those two together. Both are kind of like interview slash testimonial type shits. Um, yeah, we did record that last year too, huh? Yeah, yeah, we just didn't yeah, drop it too. we just dropped them. <laughs> we dropped yours more recently, but yeah. we we recorded those last year. Um, and I think it was just a really dope opportunity for people to get to know us. Um, and I think once you really get to understand somebody, you can see how they ended up where they were. Uh, and I think it was really dope to like dive into our family history. And the places that, you know, the places and people and moments that impacted who we were that have, as a you know result, led to who we are today. Yeah. So that was those, I would like lump those two together. Um, man, it's fucking hard to choose. I know it's only. F- but that shit was hard. I was legit like scrolling through the catalog. I'm like pff, writing one down. Uh, which one? <laughs> yeah, my, my another favorite one was the one we did with D-Lo. On you know the fire camp, the fire camps and and mass incarceration. Um, I think it was so dope. That was such an organic yeah. episode. Yeah, like I, I enjoyed that shit so much. It was one of our longer ones too. That shit was like two, two hours. hours. <laughs> I, that's when I know we catching a vibe. You know what I'm saying? When them shits get hella long. Um, and not to say that we don't really get to vibe with other people, but you know sometimes we're on like time crunches. And now it's one of the ones where we weren't on a time crunch. Like we had just had some free time. And we we got to we got to bang that one out, but I enjoyed. And that. it was also like a follow up conversation yeah. too that you had, you know. Yeah. I that was saucy as well. It's like me, real, yeah. like me real and this nigga was having a conversation at yeah. dinner, and it just so turned happened to turn into a podcast yeah. episode. And you know, D'Lo and Ryan are really close, but he he probably don't remember the first time I met him was over the phone. You feel yeah. me? Like 
on a fucking three way call with Ryan, with him and Ryan and Adam, which is hello wild. And so like yeah. that's like to know that like that's how my first interaction. I for sure probably saw him as a kid and shit, you know. But like nigga, I was busy fucking me and Keenan Renault was fucking around, you know. Yeah. But for someone who I've been been able to develop a relationship with over the last you know three or four years since he's been home. And for us to like really break bread and, and dive into that conversation and, and get to know him more and his experiences, I really valued that one. And then uh, I was going to say Q one, but I'm gonna go with with Jim's episode because um, that's that's somebody me and Jim have a lot of talks and and we text each other and send each other different documentaries that we think we should watch or different uh, little interviews that we that we think we we need to be looking at. Um, and so I'm, that's someone who I've gotten hella books and nigga ain't read them yet. I ain't gonna say he not gonna never read them, but he ain't read them yet. And so <laughs> next time I gotta say, <laughs> see if we got read, nigga, read read the word I, I, I didn't really bought this nigga books. You feel me? It's just like I don't even know if he still has them, motherfuckers. <laughs> but that's you. You get to see like I mean, this is you know who who checked me on this shit was Ty actually because I think I was saying something about a houseless person being like taken advantage of and not being able to to speak on their situation or something. He was like, nah, nigga, they be knowing exactly what the fuck going on. You feel me? I had to kind of check myself. And so like, that's something I know that we've checked ourselves on over the last few months is like, bro, we don't have to get these big thought leaders on our podcast to talk about this shit. It's niggas around the corner. It's niggas in our own, in our actual community who could attest to what the fuck is going on. They might not be using hella buzzwords, but they're going to be able to tell you about surveillance. Shit, they might not even be on Twitter. You, you know, know what I mean? <laughs> they're going to be able to tell you about surveillance. You know what I'm saying? Like, even when like I said, I was talking to my nigga Josh and he was like, yeah, bro, we need something where we got our own sovereignty. We got complete control over ourselves. We get to govern ourselves. We get to protect ourselves. We get to control the means of distribution, da, da, da. I'm like, nigga, you talking about Pan-Africanism, you feel me? <laughs> nigga might not know the, <laughs> word, the word, but he but knew he like, was describing it, you yeah. feel me? So I'm like, all right, this, and that gym episode, the gym, between Jim and D-Lo, like that shit drove home the importance of just, we always talk about representation or like passing the mic and giving platforms to people. And it's like, that's what I want to do on this pod. And I think for so long, we kind of both consciously and subconsciously felt the need to like turn the bigger voices to get people to listen to what we got to say. You know, because if it's like, oh, we got the homie so-and-so, you know, people, it's, it's playing the game of fucking media and, you know, celebrity culture. Like, are people going to be more prone to listen to Marion Kaba, rightfully so, talk about the need for prisons to be abolished? Or are they going to be more prone to, to listen to this nigga D-Lo who just spent 10 Talk about it, you know. Like I know, Marion will probably be like, "Y'all should talk to this nigga." Yeah. But the the masses, as a result of celebrity culture, are going to lean towards Marion because of her platform and the work that she's done. Rightfully so, right? But it's just, I think I want to do a better job of passing the mic to niggas who, you know, can they can provide context and they can provide value to the conversations. Just because it might not be the way that you want it to happen, but their lived experience yeah. is valuable enough. Yeah. Nah, I I think we kind of fell fell into that reactionary shit of like, you know what I mean? Like of of having oh we have to have the 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 best thought leader quote unquote, you know what I mean? And that's not the case <laughs> at all. Like, yeah, those people are important and they offer a lot of contributions to the work, mm-hmm. thousand percent. But the people also you know directly affected and experience it day in and day out, bro. They they know what the fuck going on. Oh yeah. Well, uh, you know what I mean? Most definitely. Yeah. And so those are those are my my top. I think as we continue like thinking about this like kind of year in review shit, I think what would it be valuable for folks? And maybe it might be people who are trying to start their own shit, you know, their own podcast, their own whatever, as independent content creators. I think it would be dope if we talked about what some of our setbacks were. Yeah. From last year. Yeah. Shit, I mean, consistency always hard. Uh, you know, I think, you know, setbacks oftentimes is a result. In my opinion, for us, it's a result of having hella other shit go on outside of the podcast. So naturally, it's like you're going to have to adjust. And if hella black is the one thing you can adjust type shit usually, which is for us. Like, okay, we can always push this back because it's our shit type shit. Yeah. It get the back burner sometimes. You know what I mean? So I would say, yeah, that combined with a lot of, uh, you know, we experienced a lot of surveillance over the summer. You know what I mean? A lot of different, yeah, just a lot of shit, a lot of surveillance. 
um, from speaking at protests and helicopters falling to police knocking on people's doors and shit. You know, I, I think a lot of those things can impact the way the amount of space you have to record a show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Most definitely. And then also to be so immersed in organizing. Like at one point in COVID, we was outside three days a week feeding people. You feel me? It was what? Almost a thousand meals a week we was giving up. Really outside too. Like while still working. You and know. niggas had a nine to five. At the, <laughs> you know, like that's. So I think that the setbacks was a result of doing other work that is very important. You know, so I think someone said like, oh, it's damn near hella hard to have a podcast if you're organizing. You're like, damn, it's real hard to write a book if you're organizing. Shit like that. It's like, yeah, it is, yeah, but it's, it's possible. It's possible. You know what I'm saying? You but could do it, it is. It's hella hard. <clears throat> there are some people who, like, and I understand, I understand that critique that that's also a way to jab at niggas. Like, we know you're not doing no work on the side. You feel me? Like, a lot of these niggas, all they do is the podcast and take yeah. up space via talking. And for some, we understand, right? Like, context is important. Some people, because of abilities or whatever, are, are this is their only option, which I commend. But those aren't the people who are on, online acting like that's the most important part of work and making themselves be hella visible and da-da-da, right? Yeah. Like, that critique is real. Like, how you got this time to take up all this space and to organize? Right, um, which so I understand that, but for us niggas do actually damn near, you know, be on the verge of mental breakdowns, on the verge of physical fatigue, on the verge of burnout as a result of, you know, living in one of the most expensive cities in the states, as a result of being committed to the work. Like that shit really do take a, take a toll on niggas and force you to make decisions at any given moment, especially when we talk about this being a a, a vessel of self care and, and creative expression, right? And self expression. Like sometimes we literally have to choose what's best for us. What we have to choose what's best for the community and for the the organization and the people over what's best for us. And that's not exclusive to us, my nigga. Like you know, that's just what come with. You. Niggas know what they sign the up for. Yeah. Niggas know what they sign up for. But I'm just saying, like that's literally one of the setbacks is having a constantly make that decision like is you gonna put self and not self of like personal gain but like self of like what you actually need to maintain and keep going further over showing up for you know your people yeah whether that people be the people you serving or you know the, the folks that you know comrades and the people that you've committed you know to doing this work with yeah and I think also niggas been producing a whole other show outside of this too yeah you know Later. Some multiple jobs, <laughs> multiple responsibilities. And that's yeah. the worst part about this shit is, I if I if I stopped doing, like, I could I could easily stop doing a job, but my only will my quality of life be be impacted. You know, the people who I support via whatever money I'm I'm lucky enough to earn on any given month will be will be impacted. You know, so like that's the shit that again. Forces niggas to or the people you're working with that is getting money from the same shit you getting money from. Yeah, so so that's where like making a decision on the podcast shit fucks up too, cause it's like, well, shit, I gotta do this other work, but then I need to do this work so that niggas can keep getting money from Patreon. I was talking to Ann about that, cause that's why they kind of are like stepping away from from Twitter and Patreon, being like having that being forced to create. Like capitalism just puts. It just makes everything harder. Yeah. You know? Like it makes everything harder. But yeah, that that's been a setback. It's, it's having to, to choose so much. But I think now, you know, both of us have gotten really good at like scheduling. And while the work hasn't cut back, at least now we're a lot more organized and we have some help in different areas, right? Like even with the organization, building our roles there and like building clear. out a team. Yeah. Building out a team for Hello Black. Like. Exactly. So I, I think We growing. I, yeah. <laughs> like where things were a setbacks, yeah. I see us making Clear changes. clear changes like we decided like okay we need to have this schedule for recording to make shit work and here you know it's only seven days into the month but we stuck to it so <laughs> however many days 11 days into the month yeah um, we already went over what are we most excited for it's speaking of like guests and people we had on who is someone you want to get back on the show probably saying Kofa Q those are definitely two folks I want to get back on the show. Yeah, I want to get Jim back on and just see like, did he read those books and have a book review with Jim? <laughs> like, really dive into some more analysis. You yeah. feel me? Um, who else would I want to get on? Left as always. Yeah, Left always just like damn near giving at this yeah. point. <laughs> I want to get Khadijah back on. 
We only did. Did we, we do one with Khadija? I feel like we've had her out twice. No? Nah. No, we just did the nonviolent communication one. We gotta get her back on. That's funny. She just texted me. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> she just texted me. We gotta get her back on. Yeah. Who else? We gotta get Dust on. I haven't had that nigga on. We gotta get Kelly on. Oh, yeah. We gotta get a bunch of folks from Coral on damn near. Yeah. We did the fucking like PBO. Was that last year? Yeah, nah, that was 2019, know. probably. Sure. 2019. They just yeah. kind of mashed up at some point. We're going to have some fire guests for y'all. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of good content. So, patreon.com. So I Get your merch. Pie. And patrons, I want to hear what, what y'all favorite episode, what y'all top three was, too. So, go to our Patreon, drop a comment. You know, let us know what y'all favorite episodes were. Fuck with us, man. And then we gotta get on. Should we? I mean, we still gonna do some PBL kind of year review shit, right? Yeah. For those who've been following us on social media, you got to see us do a year in review for people's programs, people's breakfast, Oakland. Um, we did damn near well. Like, well, we should have updated the stats because that slideshow stats that we sent over was like three weeks yeah. prior, prior to. To the year, year ending. So Shit. Like, also, nigga, for hell of black, bro, we was in the top 100 podcast. Yeah. Uh, we didn't even say that. Top 100 on, on society and culture for Apple Podcasts. Should have been higher, but you know, yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> when you Spotify, top 150. Yeah, and we, we just got on all Spotify. the liberal shit. You know, they for sure got that liberal shit at the top. But, you know, we we coming for niggas this year, man. Most deaf. F- full court. Full court press. But, yeah. People's programs. We did a lot of, a lot of shit. Um... A lot of shit that we like had planned out too, even to changing the name. Like it was always a goal to make it people's programs. We were always under people's programs. We right? was always under people's programs, yeah. like behind the closed scenes. Yeah. Um, but you know, transitioning our name from People's Breakfast Oakland, which is always you know still exists, but uh, changing our name to People's Programs um, to encompass all the different survival programs that we're building out, uh, pending revolution. You know, so we got what the Garden. Um, community education program, bail, legal support, mm-hmm. you know. So we're doing multiple programs, you feel me? Multiple programs and uh, continuing to build out new ones that, you know, support our people pending revolution, you know. And this, yeah. is, this is the process of revolution, too, is creating that alternative to the state, you feel me? we one of the few, <laughs> yeah, we one of the few black groups in Oakland that is actually, you know, black radicals and that is actually independent of the state. yeah. To as much as we can be, as, you know, as, yeah. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited, bro. Like we we built out some some new infrastructure. We learned a lot, uh, like so much, so much of the organizing. I feel like this year, as much was proactive, a lot of it might have been reactive. Um, and it was so much we kind of just had to figure out while we were going. And that's why I'm excited. Like it was a big learning year for myself. Uh, I think that's the truth for. Much of core team and probably all of our volunteers, it was for sure a big learning year. And so now I'm, I'm excited to just implement what we've learned and continue to, to to develop new programs, continue to be more efficient, more effective, and and really uh, turn Oakland to a place that can lead by example of what it looks like for people to invest in one another, to protect one another, and provide the resources that we need to move from a state of survival to to thriving, I'm I'm really excited, and I I know I'm I'm committed to that, and I I feel the group is committed as well. We did we did nearly twenty thousand meals, five hundred plus pairs of shoes, uh, backpacks plus, for students, nine thousand plus hygiene packs, backpacks for students, like bro. clothes, all all this shit. And so thank you to everybody that supported us. The shit would not be possible. Eighteen thousand masks. Eighteen thousand. Shout out Mask Oakland. Yeah. And see, I'm, another thing I want to, I know it's, you know, nigga, it's hard to remember everybody that be supporting our shit. Um, it's hard as fuck. And so just, if anyone's we ever, if there's anyone that we f- didn't leave out on purpose, I'm sorry. There are people that we left out on purpose. There are people. There are people. And there are ones that we didn't. Most <laughs> of the people we didn't leave out on purpose. Yeah. But to those that we did not leave out on purpose, I'm sorry. Yo, we hella grateful. 
And if you a yeah. op, you know you a op. So we don't yeah. gotta have this conversation. Ain't even no you know, op, if you a op, you a op. And that's why we left your ass off. <laughs> if you look like a rat, you talk <laughs> like a rat, you smell like a rat, you probably a rat. You left niggas off. But, uh, yeah, no, shout out to also, you know, not even the, uh, shout out to all the organizations that supported us, but also shout out to just the random individuals who donated this year, supported, you know, the patrons who supported. The patrons have been a big supporter of, of not only Hella Black, but People's Programs and People's Breakfast Oakland. So, Shout out to you. If you reposted something and you didn't have the financial means, shout out to you too. You feel me? If you told your folks about us, you know, it's there's many ways to support. You know, it ain't just monetary shit. But um, yeah, grateful for all the support. And I know the people is grateful for all the support too. You know, that's that's one thing like a lot of houses folks will, you know, really, you know, they, they, a lot of gratitude yeah. with this shit. Like, you, you know, if they don't say, you can see in their face. You know, um, so just want to share that with people so they know, like, you know, people's feeling supported as much as they can, as much as we can. You know what I mean? Doing everything we can. We, you know, got to get niggas housing. <laughs> but, as we head into 2021, y'all be ready for some fire content. Um, yeah, let us know what y'all want to hear and shit like that. It's that yeah. Hella Black episode 91. Yeah. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcast from, get your cup. That's that hell of black loyalty shit, you feel me? If you're on that hell of black loyalty, you don't get a hell of black cup. Fuck with us.